Hey, what's going on everyone? My name is Kickpuncher7, and in this video, I'm gonna go over my controller settings for PUBG on console. I play PUBG on an Xbox Series X, but the tips I go over in this video should apply no matter what console you're using. Before we get started, just a reminder, make sure to hit the like button on the video if you do actually like the video. Also, I post gameplay footage of PUBG, so make sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed to the channel. And with that out of the way, let's get right into the settings. Now, the first thing I wanna emphasize is that there are no best settings. You can't simply copy someone else's sensitivity settings and expect to be as good as that person. What I wanna teach you in this video is how to go about setting up your settings so that they work best for you. So let's take a look at each setting in PUBG and how you can go about figuring out what works best for you and your playstyle. All right, the first setting that we wanna take a look at is controller button preset. Now, the options here that you have are type A, type B, type C, or custom. Now what this is specifically referring to is what happens when you pull in the left trigger on your controller. Now for most people out there, I would recommend using type B. When you pull the left trigger in, your character immediately aims down sight on type B, and then over the shoulder is gonna be remapped to the left shoulder button. For most people, this is gonna feel the most natural and what you're probably already used to, especially if you're coming from games like Call of Duty, Battlefield, Halo, or really any other first person shooter out there. For invert X axis and invert Y axis, I would leave these disabled unless you're already used to playing inverted on other games. This is where you can enable it. It's disabled by default. For most people, you're gonna to wanna to leave this off. All right, your dead zones refer to how quickly inputs you make on your controller actually register in the game. The lower these are, the quicker it will register with your character's in-game movement. The higher they are, the slower. The default here is going to be 10, and I'd say that's okay. I have mine at nine. I see really good players run this as high as 16, but essentially what you're looking for is to have your character's movement respond to what you're actually doing with the controller. If it feels laggy, lower these down. If you find your character is moving and you're not touching the controller, raise these up a little bit. One note there is you may actually have a bad controller or your analog sticks have gone bad. So there, it's probably better at this point to get a new controller instead of trying to counter stick drift with a higher dead zone. So the next setting is vibration, and this is really a personal preference. For me, I have vibration turned off. And the reason here is that even a little controller vibration could cause unintended controller movements. So if you do enable it, I would keep it on the lower side. The next settings are forward running sensitivity and movement sensitivity. I have mine at 30 and then movement sensitivity is at 60. I have played around with these settings. I've had them very low. I've had them all the way up. And honestly, I don't know what they do. I really can't see the difference whether they're higher, whether they're lower. So I've just basically stuck them right in the middle and left them there and it feels okay. My character feels okay. I wouldn't stress out too much about these. I don't think it's gonna make or break your game. All right, the next setting is vertical sensitivity multiplier. And this is an important one to try to work out and figure out what works best for you. Basically, this is controlling the movement of the right stick up and down. What I would suggest is in training, look up and down. That's what this is referring to, is your movement up and down. You could also aim in and notice how quickly you're moving up and down in this as well. So if I crank this all the way up to say 150 and go back, it's really quick. If I do the opposite and go in here and lower it all the way down, it's going to feel really, really slow. That feels awful. So what you wanna do is set this to what feels right for you. Again, this is not a one size fits all approach. You really need to go in here and play around with the settings and figure out what works best for you. Now for me, I've actually put it back to 100, which is the default setting. Once you get it somewhere, just leave it there. Muscle memory will take over and you'll get used to that. If you're changing it around all the time, you're just gonna have a hard time getting anything locked down and getting used to it. So a really important setting here is your general sensitivity setting. General sensitivity settings has to do with your characters looking around left and right. I like to have this relatively higher. This allows you, if somebody say shooting behind me, turn around real quick and be able to spot them. If it's too slow, you're gonna be moving really slow, trying to turn around. You know, if you have aim acceleration on, you might move a little bit quicker, but that's, you know, typically you want this somewhat higher so you can look around quicker. Also, one thing that you wanna do in your general sensitivity settings, before you aim in on a target, let's say this target right here is who I'm looking at, 
I wanna make sure I've centered that person up on my screen before I even aim down sights. What I mean by that is I could be running here, hear this person over here, look over, have them already in the center of the screen and then aim down sight. What you don't wanna do is you don't wanna hear somebody shooting and then do this. That's terrible because you're gonna be way off. You're gonna be really slow. You wanna spot the person, aim down sight and then shoot at them. Another thing that I have on that's helping me right there too, spinning around a little bit quicker is my aim acceleration. So I do actually have this enabled. Now I only have it at one, but essentially this causes your movement to move quicker the further down you hold on the controller. So let's say for instance, the classic scenario, a car is driving by and I'm aiming at that car and I'm trying to keep up. Well, as I aim, aim acceleration is gonna kick in and cause my controller to move quicker. And that can help me keep track with objects. Now, I don't specifically do it just to be able to keep track with objects. The reason I have this on is the game feels smoother to me with it on. I've had it off and I've had my settings a little bit higher, my sensitivity value is a little bit higher. But when I have it turned on, for some reason for me, the game feels smoother. If you do disable aim acceleration, then when it comes to your aim down sight sensitivities, you're probably gonna need to have those a little bit higher. If you have it turned on, you'll probably have these somewhat lower. So over the shoulder aiming sensitivity, I have this at 10. Honestly, I don't over the shoulder aim very often. It's mapped to LB. Now I'm using an elite controller and I've mapped my left bumper to the left paddle on my controller. It makes it a little easier to get to. But honestly, I don't use this very much. I think in most situations, you know, if a person's right over there, you're gonna be much more accurate if you actually aim down sights. So usually I don't recommend this. Where I do over the shoulder aim people is let's say for instance, there is a rock. Let's say this is you know an object and somebody's on the other side of it and they're coming around. I might over the shoulder aim real quickly here. Whereas aiming down sight might be a little bit tougher, especially if they start to run out to the side. Over the shoulder aiming, I might be able to keep up with them a little easier if they run out to the side on me. So that's where I would use that. In pretty much every other scenario, I'm not going to do that. I'm just gonna aim down sights. All right, for my ADS settings, you can see I have each one on a different setting. And how did I come about getting these specific numbers? Well, what you do is go into training, grab a gun, and put that scope on the gun. So for the one times, I'm gonna grab a red dot or a hollow, and I'm just gonna practice aiming down sights with it. If it feels too slow, I'm gonna bump up the sensitivity setting some. If it feels too fast, like I'm moving past something really quickly and I can't control it, I'm gonna lower the sensitivity setting some. So that's how you figure it out. You know, you could copy somebody else's, but I would suggest going into training for yourself, grab a red dot, grab your gun, and just play around with the number sum and feel out what works best for you. So once you figured out your one-time sensitivity setting, just move right on to the 2X, equip a 2X on your gun, do the same steps. 3X, same steps. Now I have my 3X a little bit higher because what I actually like to do with the 3X is I like to throw it on a MP5K or an SMG or a DP28. And having a little bit higher allows me to full auto spray with it, I feel like a little bit better. Um, but again, this is all gonna come down to personal preference, what's comfortable for you. So that's why I put mine at seven. And then with the rest of the scopes, you simply attach the scope to like a car 98 and go into training and practice just aiming. You know, look at a target and see how quickly can you aim? How comfortable is it? And again, the same principle applies here. If you center up your target first, you're already practically there, right? It should just be minor movements instead of if I'm trying to aim and I'm looking over here and then I have to find the target. That's way too slow. So what you wanna do is make sure center up your target, then aim, and you're already there. You don't even have to move that much. So here again, if you want to actually just copy my settings, you can do that, but I would suggest going into training, attaching different sights to your guns, playing around with the sensitivity settings some. What I would suggest is keep your ADS settings somewhat on the lower side, keep your general sensitivity settings a little bit higher, and practice that centering up your target first before you aim down sights. 
and you'll probably find that you're much more successful if you're at least just doing that one thing in PUBG. Now one setting I would maybe go in and adjust is your field of view. I have mine at 96. Some people like to bump this all the way up because they like to be able to see everything around them and that's what that does. You know, the higher, further out it is, the more you can see around you. But at the same time, having this drawn in a little bit, I feel can help you with your recoil control and probably just help you be a little bit more accurate on your shots. So I have mine at 96. Again, play around with it some for you and see what works best. And then if you're running on an Xbox Series X or an Xbox One X or one of the newer uh, consoles, I would set on frame rate priority if you can do it. It is gonna lower your resolution some, but it's also gonna bump you up to 60 frames per second, which is so much nicer. Once you run at 60 frames per second for a while, if you try to go back to resolution priority, you're going to hate it you're gonna want frame rate priority. It just makes the game run smoother. And honestly, it makes you a better player. All right, one other suggestion. After you figured out your settings, if you're still struggling at the game and you find that you're dying a lot, try going into team deathmatch. Don't worry about how you do. What you're trying to do in this mode is simply get better. Try to see how many kills you can rack up in a match. This can help you out tremendously for when you're actually in a battle royale, you'll have built up the experience of being in gunfights, and you'll be ready for when you encounter someone on the battlegrounds. If I find that I'm struggling with my aim, I'll often go into a team deathmatch, and that'll usually help me get back on track. Alright guys, thank you very much for checking out the video. I hope this helps you out with your settings for PUBG on console. If you liked the video, please make sure to leave a like, that helps me out a lot. Also, I stream on Twitch, so if you want to catch a live stream of me playing PUBG, you can do so by going to twitch.tv slash kickpuncher7. Have a great day, everybody.